Aqua gang, 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 what it do, boo? It's your girl, Empress 777 here today with a general message from my beautiful Aquarian soul, family, my Aqua gang, what it do, you guys? I hope everything is going so well and everything is super fantastic with you. It most certainly am, um, it, is, it most certainly is with me. <laughs> Holy angels and spirit, guys, please come through. Give us exactly what it is that we need to know in regards to my beautiful Aquarian gang, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus sign. Please keep in mind that the messages are, in fact, general, guys, okay? I want to take what resonates. Leave the rest. Cross watchers, you are also welcome here. Just place yourself where you belong in Aziz story lines. Don't force anything to fit, you guys. Use your intuition and your own discernment to guide you towards the messages that might be here for you today. Just get a few shuffles in, lots of silence within the meditation and pre-shuffle. It definitely felt peaceful. So I don't know if you're more at peace with this connection or with your decision in terms of the connection in general, or if that's what's to come energetically. If you would take a moment, guys, please click that like button, okay? It's free. It's the freebie, baby. And it allows people to know that we exist on the platform. So I truly appreciate those of you who do it every single time. Um, and if you have never done it, what's going on? Okay, it helps. Okay, it, it's the, one of the easiest ways. And like I said, free ways to energetically donate to the channel. Also, shoot me a little comment down below. A little, hey, girl, hey, let me know what's up, what's going on. Don't be rude, say it bad. And if you have not already made it official, please go ahead and click that subscribe button consider joining our family. We would love to have you. We are one big Aquarian gang over here. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button to join the family as well as help our growth and click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload on the channel, okay? So we do not have a pre-shuffle as you can see. That kind of is double confirmation for the silence that I was already hearing. So we're gonna go ahead and tap in to see what's going on currently with the energies showing up for my beautiful Aquarian gang. Please give us the energy showing up. What is at the central? Okay, so, okay. Central conflict is um, some kind of soul contract. My soul recognizes there is a sacred contract to fulfill. So this is someone who is having second thoughts, okay, about how they've been moving. Maybe they see this relationship very much so differently, right? They're kind of viewing you as a soulmate, a spiritual connection, something more than what they've considered it to be before. There is a great deal of happiness that this person felt with you, but I feel like maybe they did not act on that. Okay, you are, um, you bring me more happiness than I could ever imagine, so either this is something that has been taken away or they feel as though the threat um, exists, right? That they may be losing this, that that there is a potential um, possibility that this is no longer something that you want to, to see through or that you see potential in. They may also be wondering if they bring you as much happiness as you bring them. My soul recognizes a sacred contract. So I would like to know down below in the comments how this person was moving before. I get maybe they were kind of um, selfishly going towards the things that make them happy. They weren't really considering you. Um, and it could be too late, right, for them to be considering the amount of happiness or fulfillment that they bring into your life, but that is the central theme of their thoughts and their energy right now. They're wondering if you really desire them as much as they desire you, if you are still happy in this, if you still want this, if you still see a future in this. Okay, so we have somebody who was playing games. I knew I felt that, okay? Um, whatever this game was that they were playing, I don't get that it was intentional, but it still doesn't negate the fact that there will be consequences for their actions. I don't see the consequences showing up um, wholeheartedly, like fully. I get this person just having a thought, right? They're just having feelings right now. They're just having a lot of um, thoughts, kind of really being analytical about things, kind of trying to figure it out. It does feel a little bit puzzling to this person that you may um, not be as engaging as you were before. So I see them wanting to plan something here, some form of an intimate date. The intimacy could have really suffered in this relationship as well. So with happiness here, I get that you filled this person's cup. I get that you were fulfilling a lot of their needs and I get that they didn't have much complaints, right? Like they didn't have many complaints. The issue is they didn't really take a deeper look to see if that was true on your side. This is not somebody who I feel is used to um, having to do that, okay? 
maybe their happiness has been priority for a majority of their life. And now that is kind of taking a toll, right? There's some wear and tear um, in their character and in, in how they show up in relationships and just who they are as a person. There's a character flaw here is what I'm that's what I'm hearing. Playing around, having fun didn't mean to waste your time. OK, so this is somebody who is kind of viewing you as someone who views them as a game player, but more notably wasting your time. That's a big one. I say all the time when it comes to Aquarians. Listen, it's not that we're so super duper simple. It's that we like to keep shit simple because we're so complicated, right? Like we're com there's a lot of complex parts, moving parts within our lives, even if people don't see it. A lot of it is internal, right? Internal. Um, so when it comes to relationships, yeah, it should be the icing on the cake. You should be, they should be your peace. They should be bringing you some kind of resolve. They should be bringing you um, a level of joy. It shouldn't feel like work. It shouldn't feel like, you know, some kind of mental Olympics. Um, wasting of your time is one of your biggest pet peeves. It's not really like the resources, um, so to speak. It's really the fact that yeah, you don't get your time back, right? In this lifetime, this person is kind of getting that idea or you may have told them this because this is, this playing cards um, oracle is clarifying this intimate date card. So maybe they feel like they can't get a word in edgewise or maybe they feel like you're not open to intimacy anymore. This could be both physical or verbal, okay? There's a close, there's a block here. Okay, now they're pointing out to me in this card, this intimate date card. You see how we have this sort of brick wall, right? I feel like they they want to spend time with you. They want to get in deeper. This is somebody who wants to change the game is what I'm hearing. Okay, so they want to change things. They want to change the way that they're showing up. Um, they're viewing this connection very different. They had some kind of an aha moment. Um, that's showing them that the way that they've been showing up is no longer going to work. Um, so I do see them actively wanting to be better, right? Show up differently, show you how they actually feel about you. Since I'm sensing that that is something that they've kind of kept close to their chest. Um, the issue is, are you still open to it? And for br a brick wall to be in this intimate date card, that lets me know that they're not getting through or they don't feel as if they're getting through as deep as they used to or as much as they want to, okay? So this person wants to plan something. They wanna go out. Let's go out, have a drink, it says, or two, okay? And have a little fun, mm -hmm. okay? So I don't suggest inebriation. I suggest keeping a level head, keeping um, your mental pathways clear in terms of this person, especially if you're still considering this relationship. And I say that because it's going to take some trust. And in order to trust this person, you're going to be able to need to hear them clearly. And you're also going to need to be able to feel their energy clearly. Inebriation may cloud that. Um, I don't think that they're trying to cloud your judgment purposefully, but I feel like this person feels like you're getting serious, like you're too serious now. Maybe they feel like you're not joking with them anymore, right? Like the lighthearted energy, the flirtatious energy has kind of dissipated. I see 10, 10 on my clock. So there's been an end, right? Like a change, a shift in a cycle. Um, it's not that they want to act like this is not a big deal. It's just, I feel like this person wants to make themselves feel a little bit more comfortable with something that has, you know, become very uncomfortable for them playing games and then an intimate date with a brick wall. There's also a light here, but the light is quite dim. OK, so this is somebody who's also suggesting that they are struggling with the pathway forward. OK, they're struggling with um, how to actually approach this. Um, I don't get them wanting to manipulate this or necessarily play a game. I get this playing games card feeling more like wanting to be, a, like I said, a little more, bit more lighthearted with things. They want to have the tough conversation, but they don't necessarily want to add the tension. So this is why they want to incorporate some libations. <laughs> okay, some drinks, right? Get a little bit loose. Uh, maybe hopefully get you a little bit more open to what they have in mind, right? Get you a little bit more open to moving in a direction that they are considering a little bit quicker. However, the Knight of Swords suggests that 
adding in that lighthearted energy, I don't suggest it. You're going to have to be very stern with this person if you're still considering them. Okay, this is somebody who likes to get out of things by joking, right? By playing, by being flirty, by, you know, just incorporating sex, potentially just incorporating things that makes it less intense when this is serious. Okay, um, there is no space for irrationality at this time because this is a pivot for you this is a pivotal moment is what i'm hearing this relationship will either take a pivot or you're going to take a pivot away from this this is um there's a decision that has to be made in terms of what your future looks like what your happiness looks like there is also this energy of you needing to prioritize the thought of that more um than the thought of other people's happiness and whether you fit that mold Knight of Swords is, like I said, it's a oh, wow. These cards are just falling all over the floor, you guys. Hold on. <laughs> what the? Okay. So in terms of the cards that have fallen all over the floor, about three of them to be exact, um, they're signifying to me intuitively that that is a part of the thoughts that this person is struggling with. Okay. The very first card that popped out on the floor is the six of cups, right? So we already know that this person is having thoughts of you being a soulmate, um, a, a past life partner, someone that they have had the chance to be with prior to now. The struggle comes in because this person may be getting downloads or maybe some sort of a dream, some sort of an epiphany, right? Like I said, an aha moment that they're doing it the same exact way. They haven't changed in this lifetime. Okay. There are things that are showing up to them to let them know that you've been placed in their life for a specific reason with happiness here, but they've been playing with it. They haven't been taking it seriously. They haven't been getting deep enough. That character flaw is still getting in the way. It's something that they are not addressing. They're not willing to address it or they haven't been willing to address it. The same the way that they're acting now is the same way that they have always acted. You may have known this person for many of lifetimes before. This would also explain to yourself, just in case you were wondering or confused about why you're still dealing with this, right? Why you're still considering this, why you're still attached to this emotionally or care at all. It is because of that. It is because this is a cycle or this is, this is something that this person has been trying to get right for many of lifetimes. Okay. I do get you, um, wanting this to work, but you're not willing to force it to work. Right. And you're not supposed to, they have to do the work. This is some, this is a lesson that they have been continuously putting off. And so that's why I feel that bit of a, um, ick when it comes to the Knight of Swords showing up over these two cards specifically, because this person needs to lean into their emotional maturity. They need to lean into that emotional openness, the emotional vulnerability. You need to put the sex aside. You need to put the drinks aside, the escapism aside, the lighthearted energy aside. This is not a fucking joke. Like, are you, wh which lifetime would you like to re recognize and realize that this is not a joke? Okay. So that is spirit's question to this person. And they're still considering kind of going back and forth, back and forth. And now they're pointing out to me in this six of um, cups card that this person may be battling with, you know, two different sides of themselves. Right. The the person that wants to still operate as their the, the lower vibrational self, right their their younger self, their more immature self, the, the self that if, where it feels easier, where things are done for them, where people can figure it out for them, where people just tolerate anything, right? Because they don't know any better versus the person who needs to grow the fuck up, level the fuck up, you know, step your cookies the fuck up, mature up, right? Like grow up already and recognize what's in front of you. It's crossing still because they're, you know, they're back and forth. Okay. They're battle. It's a battle back and forth, back and forth. The battle internally is about wanting to move forward, but spirit is not allowing neither one of you to move forward. This is a purposeful block. Okay. Divine intervention. If you will, this cannot move forward with the level of darkness that this person is carrying, the level of shadows, the things that they are unwilling to address, or they're trying to run away from. Okay. Um, spirit is like, you have carried Aquarius with you long enough. It, it, enough is enough, right? Like this is the impasse. This is where you have to choose. And if they choose to go with the older version of themselves, they will risk losing you. Okay. We have the Knight of Pentacles that shows up in the reverse. The Knight of Pentacles in the reverse specifically is not only a block, it's a hard stop. 
So they're struggling with two different versions of themselves, right? This is somebody who wants the best of both worlds, but unfortunately, some parts of their old version can no longer go on with them, okay? They have to choose. Um, if they choose to not evolve, if they choose not to change, if they choose not to check this character flaw and show up the way that they would have to in order for spirit to see them fit for you, if they choose not to do that, then we have a tear, a break, okay? Detachment. Now, you're going to be fine, okay? Um, not saying it's going to be easy, but you will heal from this and you will be fine. Um, there's still free will on your end. Even if this person does this work, for some of you, you may have already recognized that you're just going to move forward, okay? Um, maybe you have already seen that this is not working for you, okay? This Knight of Pentacles in the reverse, like I said, is a hard stop. It's a hard boundary. It's a hard no. Um, you may consider this too much work, but for some of you, there may be some forgiveness here. However, the work still needs to be done, okay? And it's not that you don't have work on your end. You do as well. We all do, okay? We're not exempt from the work that needs to be done in this lifetime, but in terms of this relationship, you've done more work than this person, okay? You've evolved. You've shown up. You've compromised as much as you can. You've met them halfway over and over and over and over again. And this Knight of Pentacles in the reverse suggests to me that Spirit is saying you can't, there's no, there's no more halfway, okay? You've already gone, Every half that you could go and every foundational, um, meaningful thing that take, you know, that, okay. In every way that it would take for the foundation to be solid, you've met this person halfway in every category. So you would have to willingly be willing to do their work too, in order for this to work. If this person doesn't want to do the work, it's not suggested Okay, it is not suggested. In fact, there's nothing left for you to do. You've done all that you could here. If this person wants this, if they're wanting to fight for this, they're needing to recognize and level up. They do want you, but it's like they're going to have to sacrifice their old self to have you. And that's very telling, you know, because somebody can say that they love you. They can say they, that you bring them so much happiness and how they value you and how they see you and how they see the two of you together. However, if you're not willing to do the work, then how valuable do you really consider me? You know what I mean? Like this has been the impasse every single lifetime. Um, and spirit is not willing to allow them to do this again. And this might be the last time that they get to do this. This is why it's showing up so heavy in their energy. It's definitely weighing down on them very heavily because this decision will change the trajectory for all lifetimes after this. They struggle with selfishness. They struggle with recognizing when something is selfish because let's be honest, right? In life with anybody, with everyone. There's a healthy level of selfishness to have. Otherwise, you're just a pushover. You are just someone that people walk over. You are just someone that people use if you don't have a certain level of selfishness. But see, what this person struggles with is seeing where that thin line is, okay? Um, and they've teetered it for so long and they've gone all the, way other, all the way to the other side of the extreme of always going after their own happiness without considering others, without considering anyone else. This is something that they are needing to detach from. And it is painful, right? It's, um, it's, a, it's a mental conflict. It's a tug of war with themselves. So spirit is sort of like posing this decision, very tough decision to this person. It's going to hurt either way, right? One of the painful detachments will, that they have to consider is releasing them, their old self, which may mean detaching from some of their friendships, some of their family members, some of their bad habits, addictions, right? Um, their ways of doing things. It's a complete and total overhaul. That could be hard, tough, painful even, right? 
um, because it, it it's like a death. It's a death of the old version of yourself, man, sir, breast is, right? And then on the other hand, they have to consider another death and it would be the death of this soul contract. It would be breaking the contract. Spirit is done with them. They're not, they're gonna, they're not gonna let them do this to you anymore. So they have a choice. And for someone who, self, who struggles with recognizing when they're just doing something for themselves out of self-love or if they're just being selfish, this is why, you know, it, it's so hard. It's tough, right? This can't show up anymore. The spirit does not want you to have to deal with this or tolerate this anymore. It's not your shit. You can't hold your shit and this person's shit as well. Like, that's not fair. That is not compromise that is not love that is not how this shit is going to go anymore they want me to read this forgiveness card and it says i'm willing to forgive and let go of the past hmm hmm because me reading it just now is from the perspective of this person actually saying that, right? Sort of let, let go of what happened. Let's not talk about the past. Let's forget about the past. Let's not even focus on it. Let's move forward. However, are you willing to let go of the shit that needs to be let go? Because if you're asking Aquarius to do it, then you need to be doing it too, right? Hello? This is why you need to have a level head, a clear mind. I do not suggest entangling with this person sexually. I do not suggest drinking, none of that. These decisions that both of you are being led to make because there will be a decision for you as well. Um, it needs to be clear, you need to be clear headed. You have to be very clear of mind and clear. You, you have to be extremely clear <laughs> with yourself and spirit and your soul, right? Your soul's mission, your soul's purpose, your wisdom. Otherwise, some decisions could be made that will lead that could lead to um, some very tumultuous cycles ahead. OK, so we have access and availability. OK, opening up rec receptivity, openness, readiness. Right. This is crossing. This is what it's all about. You have control over your access, of course. Um, but spirit is kind of putting their hand in this because some of you may have been struggling, right? With walking away from this. I knew I felt this energy all along. Okay. Um, th it has been a struggle, right? Some days you're fine. Some days you're good. You're good without them. You're not even thinking about them. You're not even thinking about this shit. And other days it's bad, right? Like we could just admit that. Um, it's been a tug of war. So spirit is here to, um, like I said, intervene. This is divine protection going to give you some really hard truths about who this person has been um, and where things are going. And while the decision is totally up to you, like I said, there are going to be some blaring and loud truths about them and their selfishness, depending on which decision they make. Right. They're going to show you specific examples where this person is clearly choosing shit over you clearly choosing the shadows over you and that is if they make the decision to keep their their old self right if they make the decision to just stay the same um if they choose their old self then it will be very hard to ignore this person blatantly putting you at the bottom of the list literally under their motherfucking foot you won't be able to not see that and it will still be your decision, but I feel like at that point, your intuition will be screaming at you, okay? On the other hand, right? If this person chooses to do the work, we have the King of Cups, right? So those emotions are maturing, okay? Um, it will be reason to celebrate, yes, but not immediately. Okay, this is about an ego death. This is about the death of someone who actually loved themselves as they were, someone who lacks self-love. So they held on to a false version of themselves. So it's not gonna move overnight either. 
However, you will also get in some signs, synchronicities, downloads. You're going to get some very clear indications that this person is choosing to do the work. And unfortunately, I feel like one of those things that you will get is this person willingly letting you know that they have to do some work. Right. For some of you, they may use the phrase um, when you let you let go of something that you love. And if it's meant to come back, it will. So there will be some form of a separation. But in your mind's eye, you will know that they're doing it because it's what's best. And it's going to help the growth of the relationship more than hinder it. And, and that will allow it there to be a beautiful opportunity for the two of you to have a fighting chance. However, the choice is still this person's. OK, um, depending on which way they decide to go and then they're going to leave the choice up to you. So it's it's a lot going on here and it, it's very confusing, actually. Um, yes, there will be some rain, guys. OK, but there will also be some rainbows. How soon those rainbows come will depend on your decision, right? So, let's see here. We have player, okay? So, for some of you, this person's ego, right? Their lack and ability to see their own worth, right? The lack of self-love entailed them being with multiple people or being non-committal, right? Being hesitant about going towards someone or something that has been nothing but good to them, nothing but pure to them. Someone who has been placed in their life literally as a gift, okay? Sometimes it takes for people to lose something or to have a fear of losing something before they can see and recognize what they actually have. But like I said, just like with all things in life, once you lose a good thing, there's no guarantee that you'll get that back, even if you do what's necessary in your mind, right, to earn it. So let's hop over to the extended, guys, okay? It's a very deep message. Um, there's a lot of chords and strings and moving parts. Um, you're going to be fine, but I definitely want to see this person's plan. I just have to see it, right? I definitely want to know how they're moving within the next six weeks to three months or so, okay? Um, six to eight weeks, that's what they're saying. Let's see how this person plans to move. Um, what are their intentions behind the movements, right? I also would like to know how this person's karmic debts can play a role in not only how they intend to answer or choose what they choose, right? What they, what they will finally decide, which way they will decide to go. I also would like to know how the karmic debt could impact the outcome of this. Okay. In this lifetime, this is the end. It's either going to be something and the two of you are going to tie this together for this lifetime and many lifetimes to come, or this is the end, okay? So it's important, it's heavy, I don't wanna make it a joke, I'm not joking about this at all, okay? I also would like to know this person's purest feelings for the future of the connection, okay? That will let us know if they think they're gonna get away with stringing you along as the old version of themselves. And they'll also give you the answers in terms of what their choice is. They're either choosing this relationship or they're choosing, they're not choosing. Okay. Um, either way it goes, you will have something extremely beautiful, but this will at least give you some insight in terms of making your own decisions moving forward. We'll also look at their specific next steps, like I said, and we'll look at any regrets from the past, which will let us know if this person is choosing to transform, if they are choosing to let the ego go as painful as it would be. Are they choosing to endure this pain for the hope sake of this soulmate connection or are they choosing to rely on something that is superficial and not real? Meaning, i.e. not choose this, not choose you. OK, we'll get the best possible outcome of this. Is there a potential for this to actually work? Is there a potential for this to go all the way? What is the likelihood of that? OK, 
And if you decide to reinvest in this, what are you setting yourself up for? Is this person willing to show up for themselves in order to be able to provide you with what you deserve? This Ten of Pentacles. We will also get into the new. OK, then that's for those of you who are not waiting around to see if this person chooses this or not. You would have already made that decision and there's no judgment. Right. Um, either way you decide to go, you know, it's best for you. Um, so we will get into the new and see what and whom is over there. Only the good, only the new upon your healing. And I first want to look at what it's going to take for you to heal completely and to fully release this. Never to be seen again, guys, okay? In any lifetimes to come. This is the end. This is a cord that's being cut permanently. Um, what do you need to do in order to heal and start that forward movement towards the things that you actually want, the things that you are manifesting, the things you desire? And then we'll get into how you will potentially meet this person, who they are, their personality, right? Like what's attractive about them, what will stand out about this person to you and why they would be worth your motherfucking time. We'll also look at the best possible outcome, meaning is there a potential for that to be the long term committed relationship that you're looking for? We'll look at some time frames for both old and new. And we'll also look at the time frame for when your next relationship, long term committed relationship will more than likely be. I'll also spy a little bit to see if we can get a sign or a synchronicity that you can look out for in terms of when you meet your divine counterpart. And we'll see if they'll give us a time frame on that as well. We'll get some advice to wrap things up in terms of how you can um, help to support spirit and yielding the desired life of abundance, health, wealth, fulfillment, happiness, um, generational wealth, whatever your recipe is, how you can bring that about and manifest that in the least amount of time, how you can support spirit and speeding up the momentum towards those things for you. Okay. So without further ado, guys, please click that like button, the subscribe button. We have a lot to unpack. I'm going to put the link for the extended reading down below in the description box. Y'all saw that light go off. Somebody is not happy about what we're about to unpack in this extended. <laughs> we'll put the link for the extended reading down below in the description box. I'm going to see y'all over there. Let's go.